someone asks you some questions about who you are, okay. because I know who you are, but everyone okay. else needs to know who you are. Okay, no doubt. Okay, so tell me your name <laughs> um, and, you know. Well, my name is Malcolm Green, and yes. I'm the uh, owner and founder of uh, Karima Bay. Um, and what we do is we create dining experiences. Uh, Great. We find unique spaces and we essentially create an ambiance and we create three, four, five course meals. We pair them with wines, we serve cocktails. Uh, we try to create a spiritual uh, connection with food and uh, you know socializing. You know, they're, they're basically food, fun. Right. Um, and, and it was we, that. Know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty it much in a nutshell what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Well, Karima Bay, believe it or not, is part of my name. Um, okay. My name is uh, Malcolm Julius Karima Bay Green, and um, Karima Bay was something that uh, actually Denise and I came up with in terms of when I was thinking about creating an expectation with a name but something that wasn't quite out there so it was about like creating something that was interesting you know and so Karima Bay in my opinion would give this image of like you know you think of something Mediterranean or just it, it creates an image it doesn't really I don't know what it evokes but it, it, in my opinion it evokes something so um, that's pretty much where I got that from and um, it's just something I thought was different as well. Okay. What do you want your patrons to walk away from after having the Karima Bay experience? I think that I want my guests to have had uh, wonderful food, mm -hmm. um, excellent conversation and dialogue with individuals that they may not have known before then. Okay. Um, the idea is that you're, you're sitting at a table and you're breaking bread with other people that um, have a very common, spiritual thing. common interests, um, sure. you know, great food. Um, the food can be the talking piece. Uh, the you know, you don't know who you're really sitting across the table from, so maybe, you know, you have an opportunity to get a little bit of information on what that person is doing in right. their life and where they're at. And right. the whole, how everything, you know, kind of blends together, I think, has a lot to do with just what's, wh where the person's at in their life, you know, and, and, and what they want to share when they're at the table. Right. But I'm hoping that the patrons come want to share stuff, and then they want to talk about the food, which is the important thing. Well, <laughs> I hope that I'm able to have this experience again and you know attend more of your dinner your dinner parties I, I I'm realizing I'm more of a foodie than I think I am well I'm trying but to convert because, people yes you're trying <laughs> yeah. to convert me into being a pork eater you tell me you know listen you know one of the things that I find is that um, you know when it comes to food there's so many reasons why we limit ourselves you know yeah. and my grandmother's 92 and she can't eat many things but when she could you know, she put things on the table that I absolutely wouldn't touch. But then I right. realized, you know, <laughs> there's going to come a time when we can't actually eat that food. Let me try and enjoy this now. Um, and pork belly is, quite frankly, one of the tastiest things in the history of wow. mankind. It's just nothing that evokes the kind of flavor that pork belly. I'm like passionate about it. Like I, 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 I don't yes. know. People that don't eat pork and they say it's for religious reasons, I'm not here to knock religion, but I can honestly tell you, you're missing out. <laughs> right. Period. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I wanted to yeah. do today yes. was give you the kind of pork experience without the pork. Right, um, and I got that. The duck um, was very tasty. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the, duck, the smoked duck hash, it is kind of there to kind of mimic that corned beef hardiness. Right. But, um, so and, we're, talking, and, we're talking about a smoked duck hash that you made. Yeah, Something, it was a smoked duck, ha smoked right. duck hash. Um, right. I use uh, cipollini uh, onions. Mm -hmm. uh, Benjote potatoes. I have a tough time saying that potato. Uh, I used the uh, Spanish uh, smoked paprika. Um, we used obviously fresh garlic. We uh, mortared and pestled the so garlic. You're, you're preparing your own seasoning, toasting your own seasoning. Yes, as everything well. is toasted freshly. Uh, the now the smoked paprika is from Spain. I mean, okay. you know, like you know, you want to do some things. That, <laughs> I mean, trying to make smoked paprika. I'm, I'm getting there, but not quite. Like, well, I will toast my own cumin. Uh, and, and grind it. I will toast my own coriander and grind that. Right. Um, those are elements that just burst with flavor and I think yes. that when you buy a powdered uh, seasoning and then you use like the seed and you toast it in the oven for a little while and then you actually mortar and pestle, the flavor difference is night and day. Right. It's like using fresh nutmeg as opposed to buying the nutmeg exactly. that's in the powder. Exactly. It blows up your food just to a whole new level. level. Just, you know, the same, the same sprinkle, the same sprinkle, just the difference in the, you know, cutting it fresh and not. 
So well, I would definitely say it, I found it to be a very comforting, a very comforting meal. So someone Thank would you. approach it as a comfort food. It's comfort food. But I also found it to have such a, a high degree of being gourmet well, that you. that you know, as a person who appreciates different fresh ingredients, which yours are also locally you. sourced. And Everything get is from, locally sourced. The farmers market, 14th Street, Union Square. They there know you me. There you go. I love that. I love <laughs> you know, that. They know I love me. them. Um, yeah. The duck is sourced yeah. from there, the onions, the potatoes, the garlic, uh, the wood garlic is especially great. Um, it's just strong Stronger. garlic. Um, you know, one of the things that, unfortunately, if you don't like fresh ingredients, I am not going to work for you. Right. I don't do processed foods. Right. You can't um, cut corners when you're, when you're given this kind of experience because yeah. I, I found with the hash, like, okay, so then it was like a soft a soft fried or you do it with a poached egg on the um, top? Believe it or not, I'm not a huge fan of poached eggs. Okay. okay. And so this was my own personal dilemma. I fried it soft and then finished them in the oven. Mm. Right. So I wanted the top to be untouched, mm. but I wanted to have some crunch on the bottom and I didn't want it to be runny because of the Parmesan sauce. Exactly. So I covered it with the Parmesan sauce that basically had some Parmigiano Reggiano in it, right. uh, some fresh garlic, of course. Yeah. Uh, it was real simple and, um, and, and heavy cream, uh, salt, fresh coarse pepper. Mm -hmm. um, let it I enjoyed there. it. I, I also put a little it. bit of the duck, the duck fat. Yes. From the from the duck breast, um, you put that in the sauce, and it just kind of gives right. it a little flavor. Also, and kind of stays in theme with what you're having. Right. You know. I enjoyed the sauce that you no, used you. on the mesclun. Thank you. That was a ginger soy. Ginger soy, ginger real ginger simple. Soy ginger soy, um, a little olive oil, <laughs> a little lemon. Right. I've had a few mimosas, so you know. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, right. And uh, yeah, that's real simple. And then that was just again just to open up the palate. Uh, simple, you know, uh, mescaline and uh, uh, great tomatoes. Just again, just to. One, to one of the great good. things is that, yeah, I want to serve a balanced diet of food, you know, and sometimes there isn't really room for a green vegetable within the plate of food that you're right. eating, right. you know, but right. green vegetables are very important and definitely I would say that in the last few years I've focused a lot on trying to make sure there's some kind of balance. Mm -hmm. uh, something green at some portion of the evening. Right. Um, so when you come to a five course dinner, you know, you're going to get plates that are carb heavy, yeah. you know, and, and protein heavy, but you're also going to get the lightness of uh, a green, a yes. vegetable, a s something, you know, green. <laughs> I wanted to definitely talk about the grand dam of the meal, which was we had a French toast that was topped with apples, um, brie, um, walnuts. It was delicious. It was hollow bread, thickly sliced. I'm talking it was like an inch and a half, two inches thick, inch and a half. beautiful slice of, of, yes. And the brie, and I was wondering while I was eating it, I said, what was that? combination of flavor and it was that rawness in the walnut with the brie yes. that was creating that wonderfulness in my mouth. I love the consistency of the apples. Thank it wasn't you. completely stewed down as a compound. No, it wasn't supposed to be. What it's supposed to do is basically uh, it's got some brown sugar, some brown yeah. onion, um, some vanilla extract, um, and the lemon, idea, the, the oh, a lot of citrus, the the citrus the yes, absolutely. Yeah. But the idea is to just get them to be a little crunchy. Yes. Um, I mean, apples, you know, crunch, you know, and again, the idea is that if it's fresh, it's not going to feel like it's stewed down something that's been sitting in a jar for a month and a half. You no. know, I think that there was a liveliness to it, and that's what I was hoping for, you know, and I'm hoping that everybody got that, but yeah. Thank you so much. I mean, well, you know, I think anybody would appreciate it. I think anybody would appreciate what they're feeling like when they're eating the food. I, I, really I think they're going to appreciate how the food goes down. They're going to think about, they're going to appreciate what they see in their plate because they're going to see all this like great goodness and sauce as remnants of this amazing meal. So that's why I still have my plate in front of me. <laughs> I wanted it like to help me think back on what we were talking about. And it was a very fresh Excellent. thoughts and Excellent. fresh Thank questions. You. So, um, I look forward, and I think I anybody that attends Thank your you. dinner parties are going to have, you're going to be in for a treat. Thank the portions so are great, great variety, juxtaposition of flavors, ending with something Thank lovely you. at the end. It was lovely. Thank you. Okay. And the mimosas. And the mimosas. <laughs> <laughs> you know? you right? And the mimosas. So, right. like, you know, if, if all else fails, we got a buzz when we left right. today. <laughs> To that. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. To more success. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. All right. <laughs>